Over the past couple of days, I've had a lot of people telling me that they love my new haircut, but like, I'm like, over here like, what new haircut? I literally haven't gotten a haircut since May 2016. Sometimes my hair just lays flatter on days than the others. Sometimes the moisture in the air gets me fucked up, man. I mean, like, come on now. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top-notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh card review slash discussion type video and I've changed things around a little bit in terms of how I'm doing my filming and honestly just wanted to populate the space a little bit because I decided that I really didn't like a solid white background and I'd rather have something cluttering the space so I decided to just randomly put a shelf of models there that I've built and modified and stuff like that. Models that I really enjoy. Models that are very very close to my own uh my own heart they mean something to me in certain ways and different variations but anyway that is not what we're here to talk about today what we're here to talk about today is the newest newest member of the Parshath family we had Air Knight Parshath we had Dark Knight Parshath we had Neo Parshath the Sky Paladin and then we had uh, Avenging Knight Parshath the Synchro Monster that really did a whole lot of nothing the only card that actually really saw play out of these four was Air Knight Parshath in GOAT format but we have a new card spoiled for release, a new addition to the Parshath family, and that card is what we're here to talk about today. Angel Paladin, the Arc Parshath. If you activate a counter trap card or you negate the activation of a spell or trap card or monster effect while this card is in your hand or in graveyard, you can manage two other fairy monsters from your hand, field, and or graveyard, special summon this card. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can add one Parshath card or one counter trap from your deck to your hand. So this searches the other Parshath cards, searches Air Knight, sold. Consider me down. But so this is basically just like another Vandalgion, essentially, for any sort of counter fairy deck, but it's a little bit better suited because it's a level 9 big boss monster fairy, whereas Vandalgion was a little bit more niche in terms of how it had to be summoned, whereas this card can keep recurring itself from Grave. It's a recurring boss monster. That's actually a huge thing. As soon as this card gets put into the graveyard, you are going to be able to keep summoning it as long as you're able to maintain the fuel of fairy monsters in your hand, field, or graveyard to banish for this card. Now, I don't know how many fairies you're going to be running in a counter fairy deck, so you might not be able to summon this guy more than a couple of times, but the design qualities of this card being really good are definitely there. I find it very interesting that they decided to give it the effect of if you activate a counter trap card or if you negate the activation of a spell trap or monster effect. Like, that's actually really cool. It makes it very thorough in terms of uh, in terms of how it interacts. But what it does mean is that this card, at least from the wording that I'm seeing, can directly chain two counter trap cards to summon itself. Which, I mean, it wouldn't be a new thing for the counter fairy sort of theme to basically fly in the face of game mechanics and just do its own thing. I mean, we've had that for years, essentially, in terms of Bountiful Artemis and uh, and stuff like that, just immediately drawing cards in the middle of the chain when the cards resolve and things like that. So it definitely breaks down the core of like game mechanics against what we normally know to be true. But if that's the case, I mean, it's still just a very thorough boss monster in terms of how it can be summoned. It can be properly tribute summoned the normal way. It can be special summoned from graveyard to do all that sort of stuff. All in all, fantastic card. And it's big and beefy as well with 2800 by 2300 attack and defense. The only thing that they could have done to make this card a little bit better was make it a level 8 so you could like trade in this card. That would actually have been really cool because then you could search other copies of itself because that's not restricting. It's not restricting you from searching other copies of this card. You can just search Parshath cards, which this card is one, and then you'd be able to have a mini draw engine there. But that's unfortunately not something that is capable because they gave it one extra level just seemingly out of spite. But so yeah, I'm not really too sure what they could do in the rest of the new structure deck that this is being printed in. This is being printed in a new revised fairy structure deck 
coming out in the OCG. It's the newest structure deck R, or structure deck revision, basically, where they're redoing old structure decks with better cards. That's how we got the Monarch structure deck. That's how we got the Felgrand structure deck. That's how we got the, uh, the, which ones? The Ancient Gear and the, what came out with the Ancient Gear? Can't remember. The Dinosaur one. That one. Um, that's how we got those like structure decks out to us so if they want to give us another card that allows us to or another set of good monsters essentially that sort of aid the counter fairy theme like maybe cards that you could discard to add counter traps or add engine cards from deck to hand something like that that might be what makes this card actually be pretty decent and boosted up over the map because counter fairies despite being a really trap oriented and trap heavy theme and deck is still a deck that I actually you know kind of enjoy for the wrong reasons it was one of the first decks that I actually like really paid attention to when I started getting really back into the game really into the competitive scene uh, in like the late 2008 early 2009 era after I took a little break uh, from competitive play and like I was just basically at like a scrub tier locals uh, where like there was nobody playing competitively and we were all just playing with random bullshit so like this was one of the first decks that I actually like had a lot of exposure with and a lot of like you know just good like vibes of like this is me jumping into the competitive scene was playing against a bunch of my friends at the time that played counter fairies and things of that sort so it's one of those decks that I remember very fondly as a time of me trying to get into the deeper spectrum of the game. Now, like I've already said, we have no idea what other fairies they could be putting out to help support this card or whether or not they're going to be decent or not, but the fairy structure deck could have a lot of very good cards coming out to us, things that maybe trigger Ariadne a bit more, things that put Ariadne in the scale a bit more. Uh, there's, there's things like that that could definitely be just immediate go-tos for how to make a counter fairy theme a bit better because we've already got things like ties of the brethren we've got this card that if it's you know easily accessible would be a very good boss monster literally replacing vandalgion uh in terms of it's a lot easier to summon and it's a lot better in terms of scope in terms of what it does for the respective deck of the future essentially there's a lot of different things that could go into play but the only like draw card that i can think of that fairies have access to that's like generically good is sacred cards from beyond or like cards for the sky or i think that's what his name is cards from the sky but that banishes a fairy and draws two and you can't special for the rest of the turn so like banishing fairies isn't really what you want to be doing but then again that opens you up to miraculous dissenting this card back there's there's a few different things that you have access to with this card to put it on the board because it's so non-restrictive in terms of how you can play it you can tribute some in this card you can do all sorts of other manners of nonsense all that matters is that it can be put on the board via its own effect or via other means, which is actually something I really like. I really like when cards that aren't over the top like this, but are very clearly boss monsters, are actually readily accessible. That's something that I really enjoy when that's built in. I really hate cards that have a lot of unnecessary restrictions tied to them, which is one of the reasons why I really dislike Wind Witch Ice Bell in terms of a card, because it's just got so many restrictions piled on itself that didn't really need to be there. It could have been a good card elsewhere in like different formats and different things could have implemented a new like monster for going into link summoning format and stuff like that that you could use there's a lot of things that could have happened there but they put a lot of restrictions on ice bell so that's where like i don't really like the card this card however very restriction free very interesting how few restrictions this card has and it just outright searches cards when it does battle damage that's another key thing that's really good like just like most of the good things about air knight parshath was the fact that it got you extra cards this one allows you to get extra cards as well but you can search parshath cards or search counter traps so it's basically another engine to allow you to facilitate gathering up your counter trap resources to try and not let your opponent do certain actions and then you can sort of take the game from there in whatever swing of like like just momentum you want to take it in whatever actions you want to permit your opponent to do it's counter fairies is definitely one of those decks that's really interesting that it's like it's not really, I don't really put it in the degenerate category of like, you just not letting your opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it's one of those things where you have to be very skilled in terms of understanding what you should be negating. You should be getting a lot of value out of each one of your negations. And that's what separates the good counter fairy players from the piss poor ones. But I digress. I think this card is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see more of what comes out in this fairy structure deck. I can't wait to see if they're going to be doing another dual release where like they do another structure deck R 
along the same time frame as this fairy structure deck coming out because we're kind of in the area where Dragoonides are in terms of the uh, in terms of the structure deck spectrum. I mean, it was Dragoonides and then the fairy structure deck came out, so there's that that we can probably try to look forward to. Fingers crossed. New Dragoonities support in 2017, 2018, please. Maybe? But anyway, like I already said, I'm really, really excited to see what could come out of this new structure deck once this card gets a little bit more fleshed out in terms of what Konami wants to build around it in the structure deck. I'd like to see a new draw card, I'd like to see some good new generic traps, and I'd like to see some good new generic fairy monsters for the counter fairy theme because ultimately there's not very many of them to facilitate the usage of this card, but if that changes, then this card just gets better and better as it goes down the line. So there's all that that I cannot wait to look forward to seeing in the future from Konami spoiling information to us. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this card in the comments down below, as always. But other than that, thanks for watching. As always, links as always, as always, as always, as always, are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Helps make some future projects come into fruition a bit faster. Helps support the things that I'm doing for the channel. Helps show that you like what I'm doing and all that sort of nonsense. And gets you some certain things back in the form of the reward tiers. So you would have my eternal gratitude if that's something you want to go check out and maybe consider contributing to. But other than that, as I've already said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Again, let me know what your thoughts are on this card in the comments down below. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.